and welcome to another CAD Dimensions Tech Tip. My name is Jesse. If you're anything like me, you like to make things look nice. And if you're anything like most analysts, you like to make your life easier when explaining your results to clients. So that means no matter who you are, if you're a simulation user, the results display in the graphics area will come in handy. But where is that pesky option when you need it? Today we'll take a look at my workflow for quickly getting my results to show up in the context of the assembly. In order to make our results available in the assembly, we have to start the study from the top level assembly and exclude the components we don't wish to study. On assemblies with a large number of components, that can become clumsy. So here's what I do. Rather than isolating the components in the simulation study, I'll do that ahead of time in SOLIDWORKS. In order to do that, I'll create a new configuration. If we move over to the configuration manager, I'll add a new configuration. I'll call this configuration for FEA. I generally do this anyway, as it's a nice way to store changes that you might need to make for simulation purposes, but don't want to affect the production model. We'll say OK. Once I have this configuration active, we can make some changes to our model. I'd like to isolate some of these components that are part of a small subassembly. I'll select one of the components that's in the subassembly and select the subassembly by using the breadcrumbs. I'll select D on my keyboard. Here I'm able to select the subassembly, and now I'd like to isolate this subassembly by suppressing everything else. My method for doing this is using invert selection. I find the easiest way to access this tool is by using search commands. I'll hit S on my keyboard and search invert. When the option becomes available, I'll hit enter. Here we can see this is selected all of the other components from within this assembly. Now all I have to do is right click and suppress. The Invert Selection tool can also be found under the Tools drop-down. Once I have my components isolated, I can then start the study. I'll come over to my Simulation tab, start a new study, and we'll say OK. Here we can further process this if need be. I don't need these studs on the front side towards the bottom, I'll be fixing it from this area. So here we can still do whatever work we need to. I can still exclude from analysis. But again, I only have to do that a couple of times rather than many times to remove everything else. From here, we can set up our study. I'll set up our fixtures, again, making use of my S key. I'll apply fixed geometry inside these whole locations. And accept. We'll apply another fixture here as well, just to keep these flat. I'll apply a roller slider on these front faces. We'll apply a load. I'll select force. I'll apply a load where the shocks would mount. And we'll go in a selected direction. Here we'll use the top plane as reference. We'll select the normal two direction and apply our load. I'll apply five Newtons facing up and we'll say okay. From here, we can mesh the study. I'll use a curvature-based mesh. We can apply our materials and we'll be ready to run. In this case, I'll apply the same material for all even though I'm somewhat underestimating the strength of the metal studs at the end. This is just for the sake of example anyway. From here, we'll run the study. And we've gotten our results. But now I'd like to see these in the context of the whole assembly. I'll move back to the model itself and we'll undo the isolation that we've already done. Again, I'll select the subassembly. We'll invert selection again. And we'll unsuppress. Now this is admittedly a less stable way to do this than excluding components in the analysis. We'll find that the analysis now suddenly finds itself with multiple components that it wasn't anticipating there before. However, the results are still there, so I can reference them, and I'll just suppress everything by the time I'm done anyway. For me, the convenience of this method outweighs the stability that I would get from exclude from analysis. Now we have our full assembly. 
Our subassembly knows that it's been studied, but how do we access its plots? Once an assembly knows that it has simulation data available, you'll see a new option in the dropdown in the heads-up display. All the way to the bottom, you'll see simulation display. This can also be found under view, display, simulation display. Don't forget, SOLIDWORKS interface is very customizable, so you could also add a button for it right in your heads-up display if you wanted to as well. From here, we'll turn it on. And we're prompted with a dialogue asking us what we'd like to show. Here, I'll show my stress plot. You can choose to show the deformed result, if you'd like. You can show the mesh, and you can even adjust its visual properties. In this case, I'll leave the defaults and we'll say okay. Now from here, we can see our simulation results from within the context that it will exist in. We'll see that the display manager also indicates which components are displaying with simulation results. And if we wanted to turn them off, we can do so from here or we can do so from the drop-down in the heads-up display as well. Don't forget that this option works with PhotoView 360 as well. So if we turn on PhotoView 360, we choose to do a final render, we'll be prompted with an option that asks us whether we'd like to include the simulation results or not. A little while back, Franco wrote a blog outlining our workarounds for creating plots like this. And while that technique can still be helpful in certain scenarios, this new functionality certainly makes life easier and makes it much quicker to get great looking plots that describe your part's behavior within the context of the whole assembly. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tech tip and we hope to see you back next week. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below.